So we've got to the point where we've used a for each loop, uh, the collection of cells, um, some formulae uh, in the worksheet, combined all of these elements together to cleanse the data or at least to point out where the problems in the data are. So how might we finish off this exercise? So currently the routine is telling us where the problems in the data are, but we might want to intervene if that happens. We'd want a, a message box to flash up and then tell us where the problem is so we could intervene to fix it. Or we might want it to go all the way through the code and then to produce a little report at the end saying these errors were found and have been flagged up in the data. So there's two possible approaches to finish it off there. Let's have a look, a look at the first one, um, probably the simpler one first, which is um, as and when Excel finds an inaccuracy. Remember, it's comparing the data to the name list. The name list contains all the correct names. If there's a problem with one of the items of data, it's going to flag that up. So let's say the current situation is something like this. Let's, ju let's just run, run the routine. Uh, whenever there's a problem, Excel flashes up the name. So we can see that the names are spelled inaccurately. There's le letters missing. And it tells us uh, the cell address. So that in itself is helpful. But we'd have to write down the cell address or something, which isn't too bad with 200 rows of data. But if you've got 200,000, it's going to be problematic. So rather than that, let's say when there's a problem, stop the code tell me where the problem is and let me intervene to fix it. So how might we do that? Well, it's looking pretty good what we've got here. I just need one more line of code so that when, um, when there's a problem, a message box, fla message box, a message box, fla message box flashes up and then um, the code stops. So it lets me intervene. So what line of code do we need to tell Excel to stop, stop the code? What might we need? Well, a really useful line to know is uh, exit sub. So this means Excel is going to um, flash up the message box and then exit the, exit the sub, so stop running the code. So we'll be able to intervene at that point, okay? So let's give this a go. It's gonna play the code. Okay, so we've got Charlotte B9, and then we can see the code stops. Okay, so Charlotte B9, I can go to cell B9. I'm gonna just fix the spelling here, put an A in. So what would we expect to happen now? Well, we, we would expect it to not stop at Charlotte and to flag up the next inaccuracy. Okay, we've got Kim on row B49. So I'm just gonna go and fix that now. Uh, Kim is here, we can see someone's confused uh, an L and an I there. So I'm just gonna fix that, run the code again. Okay, Sandra B97, I think that was. Let's go down. Uh, B97, yep, Sandra's there. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's working really nicely. Um, and that's, that's quite a nice way to go through the data and just fix the inaccuracies as you go along. It's certainly going to save you a lot of cognitive load. It's going to be much more relaxing to do it that way than to have to check with your eyes to go through it. Let's have a look at one other possible approach, um, which is rather than stopping when there's an, an inaccuracy, let's count the inaccuracies as we go along. When there's an, an inaccuracy, let's flag it up somehow. For example, we could change the color of the cell. And then at the end, let's give a short report in the message box saying the number of inaccuracies that were found. Okay, I quite like that kind of mini reporting approach. Anyway, that doesn't make sense. Don't worry about it. Let's work through it. It will make sense as we go along. Um, so to find the number of inaccuracies, um, we're going to have to create a space uh, in the code uh, to store a number. And that number is going to increase by one every time Excel finds uh, an inaccuracy. We could use a cell in a spreadsheet, but because we're using code, there's another way we can store information that's probably more convenient to us uh, in this way. So how might we do that? Well, a good way would be to use a variable to store that uh, information. So let's say dim total errors as, and it would be an integer variable. It's going to be a whole number. It's not going to be too big a number. Hopefully, I think uh, integer will take you up to 32,000, I believe. Um, to dim total errors as integer. So now we've got a variable 
integer variable, we can use that variable to, um, to, store, to store some information. The information we're storing is the total number of errors found. Okay? I'm just going to make this line of code an annotation. So I can easily reactivate that by deleting the inverted comma. Now it's an annotation, it's in green, Excel won't run that line of code, but it's still there if I want to bring it back later. So if there is an error, then we're going to say total errors equals total errors plus one. Okay, and then at the end, I'm going to introduce an indentation here to make it a little bit clearer. There we go. And then at the end, let's just flash up a message box uh, with the total errors uh, found. There we go. So that's a really simple way to get some information out of Visual Basic. Just message box and the name of the variable. And that's going to just flash up um, the total number of errors found. Because I'm introducing more variables, I'm going to switch option explicit on. And that means Excel will check before it executes the code if there's any misspellings, inaccuracies in the variables. That's another good um, piece of coding practice. Always use option explicit at the top of the module. It's going to allow you to be more precise um, with your variables. OK, so what are we expecting to happen? It should go through the code and then flash up a message box at the end um, telling us uh, the total errors it found. So I'm playing the code. OK, so this probably means we haven't got any errors left. I'm just going to check this by switching the message box back on. OK, that's interesting. So we have got an error on row 200. Let me just check where that is. There we go. OK, yeah, Julia misspelled that. So, that uh, didn't get picked up in our total errors um, code there. So I'm just going to try, try to understand what's happening there. Okay, I'm playing the code. Okay, it's not, it doesn't seem to be getting to this line. Okay, let's put a stop in there. Play the code, nothing. Okay, it doesn't seem to like this message box line at the bottom here. Okay. Chris Sell exit cell. Of course, I can see the problem now. So when it's finding an error, it's it, it, it's going to this line here, which means it, it, it's just leaving leaving this up. It's stopping running the code. Okay, so that's my oversight. I should have made this an annotation at least. And that means that when it finds an error now, it's not going to exit uh, the cell. Okay, so when it finds an error now, it should keep going through the code, which means we should get our message box uh, at the end. Okay, and now we've got a message box flagging up one. That makes sense because there seems to be one remaining error in the code, which is down here where Julia's name has been, uh, there's an inaccuracy in her name. Okay.